Hello, my name is Donna Marie, health coach, yogi, and death doula. I'm also the host of the Best Life of Wellbeing podcast, designed to encourage you to focus on your overall well-being by stepping out of your comfort zone and stepping into embracing your whole life in order to live fully and die peacefully. This women's history conversation with Jeanette Bajalia was recorded in 2021, but the information is very relevant to us today. The entire version of this talk is available on YouTube at Best Life of Wellbeing. Today, Jeanette and I will talk about finances, women's health, stress, end of life planning, and a whole lot more. Welcome, Jeanette Bajalia. Thank you for joining me today um, with the Best Life of Wellbeing series. Um, Jeanette, you are president and founder of Women's Work. And I'm going to let you describe that a little bit. And also, you're the president of Petros Financial Group. But prior to becoming president, there was a whole journey to getting there. And so I, um, in the one of your books, Wise Up Woman, uh, you talk about your journey a little bit. And I have, um, I, I admire your journey. I, um, as a woman and as a caretaker for your great aunt and your mother, you, um, and you know, in your book, you talk about becoming a, a manager, middle management, working in middle management by the age of 26. And also at the age of 26, lost your father, am I right? 26 and became totally. caretaker of your your great aunt and and your mom your great aunt lived to be 100 your mom lived to be 93 which is a big job for you i i your journey is inspiring to me um read from your book here wise up woman um this is a guide to total fiscal and physical well-being this book yeah touched me so much. Um, and, you know, you talk about in this book in the very beginning, and then I'll go back to your bio just a bit, but you retired at age 55 and you and I have been working together a bit and I'm 54. And um, when I read your book, it, I will get to that. We'll get to the book. And I'm just going to leave it there and allow you the opportunity to just share a bit more about who you are and what you do. Right. Thank you, Donna. And I respect you so much because your your sign live your best life. That's what really I'm all about. As a matter of fact, that is our mantra as a firm, both under Petrus Financial Group Women's Worth, is like when people say, What do you do? We help people live their best life through the type of integrated and holistic planning. But I didn't do this. I didn't wake up, you know, I didn't grow up saying, oh, go become a financial advisor or go become an investment manager or go become a business owner. I grew up in a traditional environment uh, where I'm first generation in this country. Um, my parents were immigrants and they really didn't do a lot of planning in their life. Basically what my parents did was just work hard and support five girls. I'm the youngest of five girls. And my dad died unexpectedly at the age of 26. And I was in a middle management career at that point with my with an insurance company. At, at 26, I was middle management with Prudential. And then all of a sudden my dad died. I was working, my parents didn't really have the money to send any of us to college. In fact, I'm the first uh, I'm the only one in my family that has a college degree. There's five girls and I'm the only one that has a college degree, but my parents didn't think I needed one because all they raised us to say is, oh, well, you're just going to get married and then a man will take care of you. And then that's where I call, coined the term, a man is not a plan. They're great to have in your life, but you shouldn't put all your financial confidence in the ability for a man to provide for for you. My mom did and look where she ended up at. Uh, at 62, my dad died unexpectedly. I was 26. My mom ended up with the social security check, no life insurance and a mortgage. Mm -hmm. And that's where I had to at 26 put my life on park because now I had two people my father was taking care of. 
my mother and a great aunt. My great aunt lived to 100, my mother lived to 93. So I understood what it took to get us women from one life stage through the, the very senior life stages. So basically I am a product of a life journey. And then um, I climbed the corporate world and I changed companies when I got recruited to go to another company, but I only had two employers my 38 year career. And when I was 55 years old, my mother had just passed away. I had been a caregiver for over 30 years. And at 55, she had just passed away. And I said, you know what? My career lost its purpose. Life is about having a purpose. Career should be purposeful. And so that's, I write about your next chapter in the book, and I'm sure you'll want to probe into that. But I decided at 55, I was going to leave the corporate world. I was going to leave my career and I was going to go down a, a new journey. I wanted to set, sell someplace else. I didn't know where that someplace else was, but in my, in my need to have financial planning help to help me save all this money because the last three years of my mom's life cost me a quarter of a million dollars bringing in the care in my home to take care of them. So unfortunately, um, I needed uh, the, some financial planning help, but it was unfortunate for me that I exposed myself to five male financial advisors. Fortunate for me that I was treated so poorly that I decided that I could really help both men and women do retirement and life planning, financial planning in a holistic manner the right way. I kept asking them for a, a financial plan. They kept wanting to sell me products, financial products. So basically I'm here today as a product of that life journey. And 14 years ago, I set sail on this new purposeful career and I am just beginning, even though I'm not a youngster, I'm just here to communicate a message. Thank you for giving me the opportunity that says the rest of your life is going to be a, the best of your life. So go on a journey of discovery and figure it out because there's so much purpose out there for you to pursue that would make sure you're aligned in mind, body, and spirit. So speaking of mind, body, and spirit, I want to back up to when you were taking care of your, your mom and your great aunt. And one of the greatest lessons you said you learned was the importance of self-care, right? Um, exactly. So can you just, I can't even imagine being 26 years old and for 33 years, was it 33 years that you were taking care of your mom and your great aunt? And so putting your life on park and totally giving yourself to that beautiful purpose, beautiful, beautiful purpose to be there for your, your mom and your great aunt, but you didn't understand the importance of taking care of Jeanette. Oh yes, thank you for bringing that up, Donna, because I basically uh, was all things to all people. I was a, a leadership in a leadership position. I was being all things to my employer. Because back then, women, there were very few women in leadership. As much in your industry, probably very few women have achieved the ranks that you've personally achieved in your profession. Um, so you have to work hard and you have to work harder than everybody else. So I was working hard there. I was working hard taking care of them. I was doing all my education going to school at night. I got my graduate and my undergraduate degrees all going to school at night because my company would pay for them. I didn't have the money because I was using my money to take care of my mother and my aunt and myself. So I learned what happened was 10 years into that caregiving journey and that educating myself and that being an aspiring corporate executive, I ended up with breast cancer at the age of 36. Oh, wow. Breast cancer at the age of 36, no cancer history in my family. And I started researching, why in the heck did I get breast cancer? Nobody in my family, I'm the youngest of five girls. I lead a healthy life. I was eating right, I was exercising, but I didn't understand the impact of stress. And so it's a silent killer. And with me, I, I, it, it got me in breast cancer. So I chose an alternative treatment program. I rejected traditional cancer treatment. I wanted an alternative, a holistic treatment plan because I needed to get to the root cause of my cancer. Yeah. 
yeah. cancer is a symptom. Cancer was a symptom of my aggressive lifestyle, all my stress. I wasn't taking care of myself. There was no self care the way I should have. I didn't, I didn't give myself permission to spend money on myself and do the things that I should do to have that respite care during my caregiving journey. And so that's when I learned and I said, you know what? We are a product of our own health. Now I needed to figure out how to change my lifestyle, invest in my own health and well-being, just what your uh, backdrop says, health and well-being. And I lost it. I was taking care of everybody else. And then I get sick at a time where my mother and my aunt needed me. And I said, no, I'm not going to go through chemo. So I changed my lifestyle. I changed my diet. I found a doctor that treated cancer with nutritional supplements, with detox protocols, and with a clinically developed diet. And here I am today. Uh, I've had my, it was in 1988 when I was diagnosed. And here I am, 30 plus years, 33 years, 30 gosh, 36, I don't know how many years later, but it's more than three decades. I'm still here, still cancer-free and healthy and and still reinventing myself for the next decade of my life. I'll be 70 at the end of this year and I'm just not ready to pack it up. I'm ready to start my next chapter. You are, look, I'm just more and more amazed the more I hear your story. And, um, I, I, you, you mentioned in your book also that you went on a mind, body, spirit retreat to Italy to, and to awaken your passion. But before I ask you to share more about that, I just want to congratulate you on listening to your spirit guiding you. We all have that, you know, and um, I think I mentioned to you recently that I um, just became a certified death doula. And I'll be doing a talk on my job about conscious dying. And I'm realizing, you know, every single day we are dying. We're closer and closer to death the older we get. And so conscious living and conscious dying align so much. And because you in that moment took charge and chose to be conscious about your life, you know, going, you just don't know where it would have ended with chemotherapy. That's more stress on your body. That's more stress in your, your mind, you know, and you're taking care of your, your aunt and your mom. And you just don't know how that would have ended up, but you chose to take charge of your health and your well being, And here you are today. And it just takes courage. We know we are dying every day. So how do I choose to live and have the courage to make the right choices? And it takes courage. It takes planning. It takes conviction. So thank you for doing what you're doing to reach out to others, to give them the permission to go down a different path or what I call it, go on a journey of discovery. Yes. So, so speaking of journey of discovery, tell me about this mind, body and spirit retreat in Italy, where you were riding bicycles with women you met up with. And tell me all about that. Oh, my God, that was a journey of discovery. You know, it was my mother had just passed away. And it was the first time in my adult life, I wasn't responsible for anyone else. I was an empty nester, it just happens to be with older people. And I didn't know who I was. I said, All right, who am I? What what was I doing? when I started this journey of caregiving, what, who am I? What do I want in my life? I'm 55 years old. What am I supposed to do with the rest of my life? I didn't know anything. And so I said, you know, I got to get away. And then all I knew is my career lost its purpose and I needed to exit it, but I didn't have the courage to exit it because it paid me a six figure income And I had a lot of security. I had a pension plan. And I said, "Uh uh-uh, I I can't walk away. But I said, I have to, because I can't work in darkness. I would walk into my building and I feel the darkness saying, I'm not supposed to be here. I felt it in my spirit. I didn't know what it was. I couldn't discern. I'd pray. I'd go sit quietly and pray, but I couldn't understand. So I said, you know, I have to go on some kind of adventure trip. And I went and I researched a woman's group called Women's Quest. And they did a uh, mind, body and spirit retreat. And I wanted to be careful. I didn't want it to be real off the wall, real, you know, out of my spiritual comfort. I'm a Christian and I didn't want 
there's a lot of real, you know, strange things out there. I just wanted to protect my spirit. And I researched this group and it was a 12 day trip cycling through Tuscany, going in and you were cycling the whole time or you were going to be hiking. There was no, you know, touristing. You were going to go eat with the villagers in the different areas. And you, you would cycle on average 40 miles a day. Some days it was 75 miles to get to a destination where you might have lunch or an Italian family was going to treat you to dinner. And it was just the most amazing experience because as I was cycling by myself, now understand, I had not been on a bicycle since I was 10 years old. <laughs> now I'm 55 years old, going into some foreign country. And so I started practicing cycling where I live in Florida, that's all flat land. I didn't know Tuscany was all hills and valleys and winding and turning. So I just thought, you know, but I never fell off the bike one time. But I just um, would smell, like I've opened up my senses. I would smell the wineries and I'd smell the, 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 the orchards and I would stop because you can cycle at your own pace. And it wasn't a race for me. It was a connecting with my mind, body and spirit. And so that's what I did. And, and there was, I heard very loudly in my spirit that I was to close the chapter of my current life and move on to a different chapter, not knowing what that different chapter was, but I had the courage. It gave me the courage and said, the spirit within speaking loud says, close this chapter. And because I was willing to respond to that spirit and closing that chapter, I'm here today because another door opened up for me. So that I highly recommend. I had never been to Europe. I didn't ever travel by myself. I always had girlfriends or family with me. But this one, I said, I'm going alone because I got to discover who Jeanette is, what I want, and where I'm going. And that helped me start that journey. Yeah, that's, that's beautiful. Um, again, that is very encouraging to me because again, your, your story is very different, but in many ways similar to my story. And at 55 years old, 54, 54, 54 years old. 54, you're a baby. Thank you. When you told me that the first time, I'm like, that is so encouraging. Like no one has ever, yeah. you know, even my mother is 74. I tell her, you know, you're, you, you got lots of years ahead of you, but if you tell yourself you old, you're old, you are old, but to hear tell someone mom, say she's it, young, she's young. Yes. And to hear, for you to say that to me, I need, I say that to her all the time, but I really needed to hear it when you share that mm -hmm. with me, especially when we were looking at my finances, because I am stuck in the future. But anyway, at age 54, it's time for me to close the chapter. And yeah. one of the reasons I'm doing best life, live your best life of well-being is to find myself. One of the reasons I'm doing these interviews is because I have the opportunity to not only connect with people during COVID, people from everywhere, Florida and everywhere. And I also have the opportunity to learn and to help me develop that purposeful life, which you talk a lot about in, oh, I'm not on the screen, but will you talk yeah, a lot you. about planning a, a purposeful life in, in your other book, The Secrets to Longevity. And so, and then uh, I'm looking forward to retirement. Let me try to get it in here. Retirement done right. I, there it is. Retirement done right. And don't just invest, plan. So all of what you're doing is very, very inspiring to me. And um you having the courage to take that time out to reflect, to invest in yourself it is kind of what I'm also doing right now. Um, and that's the reason for this podcast is because it's an opportunity to invest in myself through connecting with other people because you didn't get to where you are by yourself. You no. are the people. I had an army of people. I saw it. I called. I said, let me come and study under you. Let me come and, and be mentored by you. I didn't care. I wasn't proud. I just said, I was just a baby learning how to walk. And I just said, I just love learning and growing. And, you know, I heard a, a, a 
consultant that I worked with in my corporate life who always said to me, when you're green, you're growing. When you're ripe, you're rotten. So when we quit growing, when we quit learning, we're just going to get ripe. We're going to rot and we're going to die a, a slow, painful death. I don't want that. I just want to live so long. I want to compress my morbidity and I want to be able to go to bed one night when I'm 100, 110, 115, doesn't matter. And I just want to not wake up because that's what we have the opportunity to do through purposeful living, through mind, body, spirit alignment. So speaking of purposeful living and mind, body, spirit alignment, I, I want to talk a bit about um, your book, Wise Up Woman. And so this book is so jam packed with wisdom and inspiration, motivation, knowledge that is practical and convicting even. Like you read this book and it makes you want to care more about your life, care exactly. more about your health, recognize, not just care more, but recognize that you don't have to be lost. Like you as a woman have the power to create the life you want and to make the changes and, and make it reality. It's easy to read. It's well-written. It's, you know, there are times I remember when I was younger, just taking a math class. And there are some math teachers, I, I'm not a math person. Clearly you are, because you work in finance. But I'm, I, and I, that was the message I told myself. I'm not a math person. Until one day I met a math teacher who could clearly communicate math. Math people yes. are so, you know, what's the word? They're caught up in um, their technical language and they're, they're geniuses, but they're not communicators. And right. in the book, you are a great, great, great communicator. And so thank you for all of your books. But this is one I have read. I'm reading it the second time, actually. Yeah. And you know, that's the key. It's the key. And, and the industry, the worst industry, there are only two industries that underserve women from a language standpoint. That's the auto industry. How many of us want to go buy a car and deal with people buying cars or getting auto repairs? But the, the second, the number one, that was the second one. The number one is the financial industry because this financial industry doesn't speak the language of women. Women speak a language of safety, security. I don't want to be a burden on my kids. I want to leave a legacy to my children. That begs the need of a different type of planning. And that's why I wrote that book. And to help women understand, because we're living so long, you have to plan for a long life. You will be active. You're still going to be traveling with your kids and grandkids in your 80s and potentially in your 90s. So you got to plan for that. And so that's where I say, well, if you want to be upright in your 80s and 90s, you got to take care of your health. So you have to fund that health care that's appropriate to what you want. I funded my holistic treatment plan for cancer out of my pocket because I saved for the unknown. And so then when I found a treatment protocol that I wanted that was a holistic, my insurance wasn't going to pay for it. So I had the opportunity to pay for it out of my pocket. So that's what I encourage all your listeners to do is to plan for the unknown, understand the health wealth connection and give ladies, give yourself permission to spend money on the value added things in your life. Those, those dresses we keep buying and the shoes and the jewelry. I mean, how many pairs of black pants do we possibly need or black shoes? But when you plant those seeds into an account that could grow, then you've got options when other people don't have options. You've got the option to go get yourself a massage every month. You've got the option to go and not feel guilty because you're spending money on your weekly manicure or pedicure. So those are the things that financial planning allows you to do, have a lifestyle. So in, in your book, you don't just talk about financial planning and I don't wanna leave financial planning just yet, but you also talked about, which was very, very um, important to me. You talked about legacy documents and um, Absolutely. You and I talked about legacy documents. Um, can you just talk a bit about the types of legacy documents that are important? 
for women and what should women be considering as it relates to legacy documents? Yeah, and I, regarding the legal documents and the estate plan, a lot of uh, women tend to think, oh, estate planning is for the wealthy. It is not. Estate planning is for anyone who owns a home, who has a bank account, a checking account, who has any a car, who has a retirement account. Um, I want you to think of legacy planning as the greatest gift you can give your loved ones, because what you need is everybody, you don't want government intervention in your life when, you, when you're alive or even when you pass away, because probate is an ugly thing if you don't plan to avoid it. And so legal documents help you avoid probate. There's different ways you can, you can title accounts to avoid probate, but in every state, has a different situation like you, Donna, you may be working in Virginia and, but you have a home in Texas or you have a home in Louisiana or you have a home here or you were uh, somebody, you inherited a piece of land in you know, Massachusetts, it doesn't matter. Every state has their own estate law and they have different probate requirements. So the best thing that you could do is equip yourself with a will or a trust, work with someone you trust um, to make sure you know the difference between a will and a trust. You, everyone needs a healthcare power of attorney. Everyone needs a financial power of attorney. Everyone needs a, a living will because what we learned with COVID Many, over 40% of families impacted by COVID were not protected with the proper legal documents. When you send your son or your daughter to college and they're 18, you need to send them with a healthcare power of attorney and a financial power of attorney because you're not going to get information on them if you can because they're of majority age um, in the school. So I want you all to think about, and if you, anybody listening, if you want a free copy of my book, Wise Up Women or any of my books, just let Donna know and she'll send me your information and we'll be, I'll be glad to get one out to you because I just want to empower you with good information and it'll start planting seeds. There's very cost-effective ways of getting legal documents. There's very expensive ways of getting legal documents. You don't need the expensive way unless you are, you know, you have over $20 million of wealth and you want to make sure you avoid estate taxes. That's not, that, that's not even a fraction of a, a fraction of a percent of the population. Everybody needs a very simple estate plan to protect you. And I look at it as the gift you leave your family. Absolutely. So yes, I want to talk just a little bit um, about um, money. So you have a chapter here that's keeping what you've got and growing it. So first, you and I have worked together to not just create a budget, because you know I had a budget before we met, but you have helped me to create an entire vision for my future to think about how much money I need if I'm living to the age of 100 plus. And, right. but you've, you've done that in a way that has given me, you know, you talked about stress that has actually helped to alleviate a lot of stress for me and has helped me to really become more mindful of my future, but without the anxiety. So more empowered. And yes. so, um, and you've, you've talked about taxes. So I want to talk a bit, you've shared whatever it is you think people need to know about growing my money, preparing for my future. What, what, what does um, Petros or Women's Worth, how do you help people in this beautiful and, and holistic way plan for um, their finances in, in the future? Yeah. And, and thank you for asking that question, because this is the end of the day, you have to make sure you, you keep more money in your pocket to convert to lifestyle. So we have four cornerstones of what we call financial planning, we call it holistic planning. It is your estate plan we just talked about is we help you make sure you have all the right legal documents and we help inform you now we're not attorneys but we work with a lot of attorneys 
The second thing we help you figure out is your tax plan. Are you saving in the right buckets of money? Because there's different ways that you can save taxes during your working and also when you retire. So we call that the tax planning um, component. And then we have the healthcare planning component. Many of you may be retiring before Medicare eligibility age. So how are we going to fund your healthcare? Plus, if you're going to live to 90, 95, do you need some kind of long-term care protection? Because Medicare doesn't cover all that. And then your financial plan, and that financial plan is your income plan and your investment plan. So we put all these together on what we call lifestyle protection plan. And we project, we have you visualize, it's a visioning process. We have you tell us where you are today, and we ask you to visualize where do you want to be when you're no longer working in your career? Do you want to reinvent a second career? Do you just want to all out retire? And if so, how do you visualize your retirement journey? Do you want to travel? Do you want to fund charities? Do you want to, what is it that you want to do? Because it's all associated with money. How do you want to, what kind of self-care do you want? What kind of mental, you know, uh, therapy you want going for long weekends with girlfriends? What do you want? Do you have any caregiving responsibilities? Do you have special needs children that we need to protect and fund for? So we put all that together and we project out. We consider inflation. We consider taxes. We consider uh, what uh, your lifestyle costs are going to be not only today, but with inflation in 10 years and 15 years and 20 years. And so we give you what I call the moment of truth report, that moment of truth report that if I'm saving this much every month and I have this much saved already, by the time 10 years rolls around, it should be this much. How long is that going to last during your journey when you're not generating income? So we give you the cost of your lifestyle and then we build in, well, what happens if you need long-term care? What happens if you're married and one or the other of you uh, walks out on life, then I'm losing a social security benefit or potentially a pension benefit. And also we help inform you when's the right age to take that social security benefit. Some people say, oh, take it as early as you can. Some people say, wait as long as you can. Neither one are right. It's all predicated on your plan because your plan is driven by your unique goals, as unique as your DNA. So that's what holistic financial planning is. It's more, and that's why we say at Woman's Worth, it's more than the money. It's about total well-being. Because a lot of the things we have to build into a financial plan before we can recommend how to invest the first dollar is to understand the cost of your lifestyle. Thank you. Um, so Jeanette, can you tell me a bit about um, the work you do as the president at Petro's Financial Group and how does it differ from being the president um, at Women's Work? So yeah, please share a bit about each of them and how they are alike and different. When I, um, when I, retired from my first career and decided I wanted to uh, go and learn how to do retirement planning the right way, how to look at it from a planning perspective, not an investing perspective. I joined a company called Petro's uh, Retirement Services. Petro's Financial Services was the name. And I joined as an independent contractor because I, I, I didn't want to be an employee anymore. I just wanted to do my own thing. And uh, 18 months into that journey as an independent contractor, I had transformed his whole company. I had rebuilt these retirement planning models. And then he didn't like it because it was a lot of work. And he didn't think that we got paid to do all that work. I said, well, I'm going to do it because people deserve this. People deserve planning before they decide how to invest or how to supplement their savings with the right financial tools. And so I just offered him to buy the firm because I knew he was not doing right by his clients. And so I bought the firm and I renamed it and it's now called Petrus Financial Group. And about a year into me acquiring the firm, I started seeing some trends. I started getting, at, I was asked to work with very young widows. One of my youngest widows was 32 years old when she got widowed. Um, 
42 year old widows. I started seeing 70 year old widows who never had their hands in the financial planning. And I just said, you know, and they, I, I knew that I saw what people were doing with their financial assets. And I saw the emotions and the fear, and they didn't think they were smart enough to deal with the financial matters, but it's not that they weren't smart. We just weren't speaking their language. So I decided to, uh, to uh, incorporate a new company. I did all the focus groups. I got a marketing firm to help me understand what were women looking for in the financial industry? Because I knew I didn't find it. I knew I was underserved, but I thought I was just unique. But then I started hearing these stories from clients I was serving. And that's when I decided to start Woman's Worth a company that specializes with the unique needs of women, because I wanted to speak a life planning message, not a financial planning message. For women, financial planning is a means to achieve their dreams and their goals and their life plans and everything that they want for their children and their families and themselves. Uh, so the only difference between Petra's financial group and Woman's Worth Petra's financial group, we do the same type of holistic planning, but I speak a different language for women's worth. It's like I'm bilingual because when I, you know, a lot of women end up navigating later life stages solo. There's a lot of elder orphans. Yeah. You can't, you can't put them down the same financial planning journey as I can put a couple who's fit and sitting very comfortable with two strong social security checks, two strong pension checks, and they've saved money because both of them work their entire year. Whereas you have, you have women who just say, look, I was divorced as you know, in my forties. I had two kids to put through college because my husband didn't pay me anything to help me put these kids through college. So women are retiring with fewer assets. Yeah. So I'm willing to work with a smaller asset base and women's worth than we can with Petra's financial group, but they're the same financial planning. My spirit, soul, and passion is obviously with the women because 80% of women die single. I've yeah. got to make sure they don't die single and poor. That's my mantra. You know, it, it doesn't make sense for us to think we should retire in our 60s. Women are contributing so much to our society. They are contributing so much. We're opening business at a faster pace. We're we're employing people at a faster rate than any. We're putting so much into this economy and that's what breaks my heart. And that's why I have to work harder now because most women owned and operated businesses, small businesses were impacted more by COVID, yeah. by the shutdowns. And I'm thinking, I'll be darned. They built those businesses, they grew them and we got to help them recover. So that's my, that's my new uh, mission is saying, I got to go help women owned and operated businesses rebuild their businesses. And, you know, cause they're, they're the essence of our economy. So that, that brings me to your book um, titled Purpose, Planning a Purposeful Life. And honestly, I have not started reading this book yet, but I love the title, Planning a Purposeful Life, Secrets to Longevity. A few secrets of longevity are um, uh, retire with, a, don't retire without a purpose. That's one of the secrets of longevity. I call them my gold nuggets of longevity. Um, it's not over till it's over. Another secret of longevity is the need for social connections. Very important when you start losing a lot of these and people I interviewed their stories, you lose, they lose their loved ones. Some of them lose their children and they say, you've got to have social connection. Another secret of longevity is self-care, having care. Another secret is a simple life. They talk about simplicity in your life. So those are some of the secrets that, uh, that I learned from interviewing across two years, going all over the U.S. interviewing amazing men and women that absolutely gave me the greatest gift. And that is to share some of their time and their stories with, with me that I can share with all those people I serve.
And, and so I got a question for you. Um, what, for a young person, let's just go back to age 26, a young person climbing the career ladder, um, you know, being stressed and working hard because you got this success goal. What, other than those secrets to longevity, what advice would you have for a young woman? Wisdom would you have given your 25 year old self? Words of I would say, uh, and, and you know, when you have an ugly life event, you can get negative about it or you can turn it into a gold nugget. I turn mine into a gold nugget. So the first wisdom that I would give a piece of wisdom and a nugget for a 25, 26 year old, pay yourself first. If you don't get into the mindset of paying yourself first, you're the most important person. That going out and traveling without having a savings account, living on credit cards, Absolutely not. Pay yourself first. Second thing, do not have more than two credit cards and pay off your credit card immediately every month to build up good credit. The third thing is, you know, think about living on a budget. So many of us hate the word budget. And then I just say, you know, a lot of people say have a three month emergency bucket of money in the bank. I say have a six month bucket of emergency money because what we saw in COVID, three months is no sooner enough to have save for rainy days, go for six months because it's, life is gonna throw us curveballs. We learned a lot. Let's, let's take the lessons of COVID and the lessons of financial planning and say, I'm not going, I'm not going to be a statistic. I don't want anyone to add to the statistics and especially younger women, because we're always, we have to be on show. I mean, we're being judged by what we wear. We're being judged by our nails and you know what, just become your own person and be judged by the values that you are inherent in you. Um, because you don't, you know, investing $20 a month over 25, 30 years at five to 7% gets you a huge nest egg. That $20 for that extra pair of shoes that you want or that extra pair of sandals you want isn't going to get you anything. So small, think small, it can become really big for you in the future if you are diligent about that. So one of the things you said in your book, um, Wise Up Woman, is that you teach women to, that you recognize that women and, when, women and men have different needs and that you teach women to, and I'm not going to get this exactly right, but how to maintain their femininity. And am I right? Yeah. Yeah. You, well, it, it's, uh, we don't have to be true to who you are. <laughs> That's part of it. You don't yeah. have to be like a man, but, but yeah. You don't. I grew up in the corporate world and um, I grew up, I was the first female supervisor, first female manager, first female director, first female senior director. It was always the first of everything. I made it a point. It's like I saw other women and they were they wanted to be like the guys. They took on personality. They took on an aggressive style. Mm -hmm. They took on, uh, you know, patterns because they felt like they had to compete with the men. I see it in the financial industry with female advisors. They're trained by men and they want to compete with the men. And I'm saying, hold on to your femininity. Still declare your intellect declare your smarts, but you don't have to push it around. I just say, you know, my philosophy was, I just maintain my femininity, but I just work to outperform everybody around me in a very subtle way. And I didn't want any recognition for that because rec with recognition comes a lot of wolves after you. And I didn't want that. Um, I knew who I was. I knew what I was accomplishing. If you become your own person, you can be who God created you to be. And that is where women, where women, we have the special character and nature of a woman. We are the nurturers. 
we have got what God created in his best. And I'm saying, take it and work with it. As we begin to just wrap up a bit, is there anything you would like to leave with the audience? Um, your social media information or how people can find you and your services, but any other um, gems or bits of information that you want to just leave as your final words? I would say in, in parting, a final world is just saying, it truly, I believe in the depths of my spirit that the rest of your life can be the best of your life. The past does not count. The past doesn't matter. You can't recreate it. You can't change it. You can let go of it because without you letting go of it, you can't go through new, new doors and just discover where you wanna be professionally, emotionally, spiritually, economically, and start aligning yourselves with resources that feed your mind, your body, and your spirit. Do not listen to one. No one guru has it all. I, I have mentors, coaches all over the place, and, and you can't ever stop learning. Just pick up the ball. If you want to start, you can go to my Woman's Worth Facebook page. You could go to my Woman's Worth website. You can send Donna Marie an email or a text or respond to this podcast and say, I want to get a copy of the book. I will give it to you because I, it's to me, I, I give my books away because I want to plant seeds in people's lives. And I know my books have helped many people and I can't reach everybody personally, but I can get them a book or two in, in their hands. And then if you want to have a little discovery call, I'll be glad to hop on a call with you for 30 minutes to get you directed in the right path. That is awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much for your generosity. I'm so glad that um, we met. And the way we met was through um, a vantage point coaching. And so people like you who are sharing from your heart are you know, people that Vantage Point Coaching is uh, presenting to the world. So um, thank you for all you do, Jeanette. And thank you again for your time. I really, really appreciate you being here. Yeah. Today. And thank you for the opportunity. If there's anything I could do for you, you just let me know. I'm a phone call away.